Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 28, the 28th book of the Bible is Hosea. Whoa! When the Bible says whoa, that means you put it in gear to stop. Woe to the crown of pride. Uh-oh. God is not into pride. To the drunkards of Ephraim. Wow. Woe to pride and drunkards. You know that those people over there in Salt Lake City say they are of Ephraim? And if they are of Ephraim, which they are not, but they are... The Bible calls them drunkards. Whose glory, glorious beauty. Well, there's beauty. Ephraim had beauty in the eyes of God. Is a fading flower. It's going away. Going to die. Which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Right? You know, fat valleys. It produces a lot of uh, vegetation. But... The land is overcome with wine. There's drunkards. Package stores on every corner. More package stores than there are churches. More bottles of booze than there are Bibles and tracts. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, the Lord Jesus Christ, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. It's destruction. It's weather events that causes destruction. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, there's destruction. He don't come back as a tender, loving baby, lamb, ready to be sacrificed. He comes back as a devouring, angry lion. The crown of pride, <clears throat> the drunkards of Ephraim, that's repeated. That's a verily, verily. When God repeats something in the Bible, he repeats these drunkards of Ephraim, but he doesn't even tell us the birthday of his son. God has more for a woe for warnings against a group of people than he has for where did Jesus live. His house number or anything. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trotted under feet. Men and horses. <clears throat> and the glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fat valley, repeated again, shall be a fading flower. And as the hasty fruit before the summer, there's that one fruit that comes out before all the fruit, which when he that looketh upon it seeth, while as yet in his hand he eateth it up. You, know, you go out there, you got a tomato plant, and there's that one tomato plant shows up before all the others, and it's turned red. It's it's in my mouth, devoured, and it's in my tummy. I don't wait. I grab that first one. Because the more you pick, the more you get. But in that day, Shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory. Not a, not a crown of pride. A crown of glory. And for a diadem of beauty. <coughs> this is the Lord Jesus Christ. A crown of glory for a diadem of beauty. Unto the residue of his people. The Jewish people. Ephraim was beauty, but they're drunkards, they're into sin, they're gone. The Lord Jesus Christ is sinless in all of all. And for the spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment, and for the strength to them that turn the battle to the gate, but they have erred, erred through wine. Wine makes you err. Through strong drink are out of the way. They're not where they're supposed to be. Now, you want to give a, a Roman Catholic priest a verse? The priest and the prophet have erred or erred through strong drink. 
They swallow up of wine. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. There's a nice good verse. Intoxication of alcohol has impaired their ability to do anything. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness. That's disgusting. So that there is no place clean. You want to paint that? Picture them of the last table supper of these priests. You want to print that? You want to paint that one? There's vomit and then there's filthiness. Two outcomings of the human body. Whom shall he teach knowledge? 1 Corinthians 14 20. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? After all this, we've read about pride, drunkenness. Who's God going to teach knowledge and who's going to teach doctrine? Who's going to understand it? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Little children. And you find Jesus Christ using little children in his illustrations. Before they have been taught in the public schools about evolution and no God and all that. Right from the bosom of the mother. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Repetitive, over and over. That's how you memorize scripture. That's how you learn the Bible. You learn it, you read it, you read it, you read it, you read it. Over and over and over. That's how you teach a child the Bible just said, nine and ten. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, Israel. First Corinthians 14, 21 and 22. And this is used for the proof text for tongues. No. A language. I mean, today, Jewish people are taught English. They're, they're, they learn Japanese. They learn Chinese. They learn French and Spanish. And to whom he said, God said, Jesus said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. 1 Corinthians 14, 22. God has given them something and they won't listen. Typical man. Rebellion. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Well, that's not what the Word of God is meant to do, but that's what it does sometimes. The Word of God destroys. The Word of God is a sharp scalpel. Even for the Christian, it is to make you know, hey, you're a sinner. Now, your reactions to that is you can repent or you can say, who cares? Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord. Just after what you heard, the word of the Lord it, it, it makes you go backwards. It breaks. Hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. Oh, now we know who we're talking about. That rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Uh-oh. You mean the rulers were scornful? The king. The priest. Because you have said... We have made a covenant with death. You have made agreement with you made, and with hell are we at agreement? Well, they're rulers. Verse fourteen. Satan offered Jesus in Matthew four and Luke four the ability to be a ruler if he would fall down and worship Satan. They sold their souls. 
with an overflowing scourge shall pass shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. That's politics. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. That's politics. That's government rule. Nothing's changed. We're gonna group. We're gonna uh, vote this one group of people in, and, and there'll be a big change. No, there will not be. Sorry. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, with all the lies, all the faults of, of you know selling yourself out, of being scornful, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone. A precious and cornerstone. First Peter two three to nine, Ephraim two eighteen, and Matthew twenty one forty to forty five. A sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. And is uh, Exodus twelve eleven. Sooner the better. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That stone. Judgment. Also will I, God, lay to the line. Well, that's where the expression is, laid on the line. Comes out of King James Bible. Comes out of the mouth of God, his action. The righteous to the plummet. And that's a kind of tool used by carpenters. When they build a house, it's a, it's a line tied to a weight. They make sure you got nice straight lines. And this hail... Revelation 16 21 shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding place in other words these wicked scornful rulers they're going to be made found out and instead of those rulers a sure foundation of Lord Jesus Christ that's the millennium you know when they hide themselves in the caves to hide from the Lord Jesus Christ right his coming and your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. You're going to die, and you're going to die a violent death. And this trotting down is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes on horseback. And the blood and the wine it speaks of, the blood is, is up to the uh, the horse's bridle. I can't think of the name of that thing. So we're reading about the second advent when God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will destroy the rulers. And they're scornful of the people, and this is the, the tribulation. They're, they're siding with, with the Antichrist. And we're talking about Ephraim. It's been Ephraim from, from verse 1. This is the son of Joseph. From, from the time that it goes forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. It shall be a vexation only to understand the report. So this, is, this event that happens, this is the, the, the events of the tribulation. For the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it. He lies down in his bed and his feet hang off. That's not comfortable. I've never had a bed like that. I've had a couch where I laid on. But you have the ends of the couch where you put your feet up and it's like having two pillows. But And the covering narrow than that he can wrap himself in it. Here's a blanket, and it, you know, here's a here's an adult guy laying on a bed. It's too short for him, and he's given a baby blanket to, to cover himself up with, and it don't fit him. Either he covers his 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 trunk of his body and his feet are uncovered, or he covers his feet and the trunk of his body is uncovered. He can't get full warmth. It's uncomfortable. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. Second advent, he shall be wroth in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. 
Now therefore be ye not mockers. <laughs> Somebody mocking you on the street. Be ye not mockers. Least your bands be made strong. Being tied. Being... For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption. Even determined upon the whole earth. Give ye ear and hear my voice. Hearken and hear my speech. He that has an ear, let him hear. Does the plowman plow all day to sow? Does he open and break the clods of the ground? Yes. He wants to get the, the, the seed put out. When he has made plain the face thereof. Does he does he not cast aboard the fitches and scatter the cumin and cast in the principal wheat and the pointed barley and the rye in their place? Now you couldn't plant crops all together. The pointed barley, there's a time for certain barley. For his God does instruct him to, to discretion and does teach him. Oh, here's a farmer seeking God on what to do and about his crop and God answering him the nation of Israel by the way for the finches now we're told farming facts here for the finches are not fresh with a threshing instrument neither is a cartwheel turned about upon the cumin and if you read your Bible over and over line upon line and precept upon precept Genesis to Revelation, you know exactly what it's talking about. You know what threshing is. You know what the cartwheel is. It's explained throughout Scripture. It's used as an illustration throughout Scripture. Neither cartwheel turn about upon a cumin, but the finches are beaded out with a staff, and the cumin with a rod. Breadcorn is bruised because he will not ever be threshing it. No, he hasn't taken care of it. He hasn't threshed it. Nor break it with the wheel of his cart, nor bruise it with the horseman. It's a, it's a um, threshing that he's not doing. This also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful, wonderful in counsel, and excellent in working. The Lord's going to do a work with Ephraim. It's going to be strange. It's going to be wonderful. He's going to get rid of the drunkard. He's going to get rid of the liars. He's going to get rid of the falsehood. He's going to establish a throne. And then he goes into about planning. He goes into sowing and weeping. There's a proper way of doing it. And there's an improper way of doing it. And you believe me, God's going to do it properly. And he mentions rod and staff. And if you're talking about a human as a father with a child, that is the butt, the behind, the child rearing. Ephraim is going to get his butt beat because he's been bad. And it's for correction, it says, for wonderful counsel and excellent working. And you go over to Hebrews, it talks about God will chastise his son, lest you be a bastard. Ooh, he said a bad word. Yeah, you haven't read your Bible either. Correction in the Bible is for good. Or at least the attempt, I mean, if the child turns out bad and you, you corrected and you tried your best and you did with the Bible, that's to the child's dismay, not to yours. And the child turns out right, then that's the correction that God told you to do. As we close, 